Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I love helping teachers with all things technology, organization, and productivity. The end of the school year is all about tying up loose ends. I'm tying a knot in their stump with my tongue. You have to finalize grades, you have to clean out your classroom, and now that we live in a digital world, you also have to clean out your digital files. There's a bunch of sent emails that just say delivered. Should I delete those? I wanna keep them so I can see what I sent. So in today's video, I'm gonna share some tips for helping you clean out and organize your Google Drive at the end of the school year. Now this video is focused on the end of the school year and focused specifically on your school files, but of course you can use these tips any time of the year. Spring cleaning? More like fall cleaning. <laughs> and you can use it with your personal Google Drive as well. We're gonna jump into it with tip number one, create folderception. Saw so inception, or at least I dreamt I did. Yes, that would be a folder within a folder within a folder. Folders in Google Drive should be your best friend. I personally recommend having your home base of Google Drive, you know, when you just open up Google Drive and it's sitting there on your screen, it should be nothing but folders. In order to create a folder within your Google Drive, either click the plus new button in the top left corner and then select folder, or you can just right click anywhere on your Google Drive and select new folder. You're just gonna give the folder a name and I do have some hacks in terms of numbering your folders and color coding them in my Google Drive organization video, which I will link for you down in the description box. If this is your first time organizing your Google Drive with folders, first of all, you probably have a lot of files, don't panic, but create categories. So maybe you have your base folders are all of the subjects that you teach. So math, reading, writing, social studies, science, and so on. Then within each of those, you can create a folder for each marking period or each unit. It really depends on what your curriculum looks like, but create as many folders as possible to keep things super organized. Now I did mention earlier on that your home base on Google Drive should be nothing but folders. If you come across a file that doesn't really seem to fit into any of the categories you have, it's okay to create an other category and stick it in there. Now, if you have a lot of just loose files hanging out in your Google Drive, eat naps. People just hanging out, having fun, eating naps. I recommend creating a need to organize folder, putting all of those loose files into that folder. Then go ahead and create your folder section and go through the files in your need to organize folder a little bit at a time. So maybe you're gonna do 10 files a day or a certain number of files every week. It may take some time, but trust me, you will thank me later. Tip number two is to delete what I'm gonna call orphaned files and old files. Google Drive makes it super easy to create new Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, which is wonderful, but then sometimes you end up with all these random ones that you created and never really used. Those are your orphan files. You also have files that you put in your Google Drive years ago and have never actually touched or opened or edited. So I do recommend going folder by folder. Yes, this is a lengthy process, but you wanna check out all of the files and figure out what needs to be kept and what you can get rid of. This is where the different views within Google Drive are super helpful. If you are looking at your files in list view, it will automatically tell you when that file was last modified. You also can click the drop down and change it to last opened. This will give you a little insight into when you are actually using these files. But if you switch over to grid view, it will give you a preview of what that file looks like. So if you're seeing the name and you're like, I have no idea what file that even is, grid view will show you a little preview, which can be helpful. Either way, I do recommend clicking the view details button at the top. It will open up a little sidebar. Within that sidebar for every folder or file, just depending on what you have selected, it's going to tell you when it was created, when it was last opened, when it was last modified, and that can really help you narrow down which files to keep and which ones to get rid of. I want you to think about this process like going through your closet. There's going to be items that no longer fit and you can get rid of. There's going to be items that have gone out of style and you can get rid of, but there will be those pieces of clothing that you hold on to and you may only wear them like once a year, but you don't wanna get rid of them entirely. Your teaching files are going to be the same way. There will be those couple of files that you only use 
at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. So you may not have opened it in a really long time and that's okay, you can still hold on to it. But if there are files that you have not opened in years or files where you know your teaching style has changed and you don't see yourself using it again, get rid of it. Now, if that scares you, you could consider creating an old folder. So yeah, literally create a folder and title it old, put all the files that you're skeptical to get rid of into that folder. And then maybe after a couple months, you can look back through it and finally be ready to let go of some of those items. Again, break this up, maybe try to do one folder a day. This is a great time to have Netflix on in the background or listen to podcasts because it's very mindless work and it will take time, but trust me, it is worth it. One word of caution though, do not under any circumstances delete the classroom folder. This is where all of your Google Classroom files are housed and it is a pain to get back if you ever delete it. So feel free to delete or move files inside of the classroom folder, but do not delete the classroom folder itself. I do have another video where I give you tips for organizing your Google Classroom at the end of the year. And I talk more about this in that video, which I will link for you in the description box. Tip number three, I can't believe I'm saying this, let the shared with me section be a hot mess. Yes, you can take the time to go through your shared with me section and you can remove folders and files. So long as you are not the owner of that file or folder, it's not actually being deleted. It's just being removed from your shared with me section. Personally, I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> it's just going to be a hot mess and it's not worth the time and energy it takes in order to try to keep up with it. So personally, I don't even really look at my shared with me section. If I do need to find a specific file or folder, I just use the search function. When you search within your Google Drive, you can actually go to the filter section and you can filter it to just search within your shared with me section. So whenever I do need to find something, I search for it. Otherwise, I just let it be a hot mess. Tip number four is to update your start section. Now, if you have a Google for Education workspace account, you also probably have a workspaces section of Google Drive. The same thing goes for that. These are wonderful tools in order to have quick access to files, but it doesn't really work if you add all of your files into the start section or within your workspaces. So make sure you take time to go through and kind of clean these areas out. Personally, I like to first go through and remove any items from my start section that are no longer needed. Just right click on the file or folder and choose remove from starred. Keep in mind, this is not actually deleting or removing the file. It's really just like a bookmark. It still exists within your Google Drive. You're just removing the bookmark from it. This is also a great time to add new files and folders to your start section that you may need over the summer or at the beginning of the school year. I always had a beginning of the year folder within my Google Drive, so I would go ahead and add it to my start section. That way, when I resumed working in the fall, everything I needed was already there at my fingertips. So the process for adding a file or folder is basically the same, just right click on it, but this time choose add to start. Think about this as doing the things your future self will thank you for. It takes just a little bit of time, but it will make your life much easier later on. Tip number five is to review your settings. You probably set up your settings early on when you got your Google Drive and then have never really looked at them again. So this is the perfect time just to go through and make sure everything is the way you want it to be. In order to get to your settings, you're gonna click the little gear icon in the top right, and then you will have a list of all of the settings. One of the first things you might wanna do is check in with your storage. Again, if you have a Google for Education Workspace account, you probably don't need to worry about this, but for a personal Google Drive, just check to see where your storage is at. You could always click to view which files are taking up the most storage, so you could consider deleting those if needed, or you can always go in and buy more storage if necessary. Personally, I pay to have two terabytes of storage on my Google Drive because I use it for all of my YouTube content, but they do have smaller packages available as well. A couple of areas I do wanna bring your attention to within the settings. One setting you may wanna consider turning on is to automatically convert any PowerPoint or Word files that you upload into Google Drive into Google Slides and Google Docs. You're just gonna check the little box that says convert uploaded files to Google Docs editor format or something like that. <laughs> I'm doing this off the top of my head. But once that has been checked, 
anytime you upload a PowerPoint or Word file, which I know I always had a ton of when I first started teaching, it's going to automatically convert it to a Google Slides. If you don't have this checked, you can always upload a Word or PowerPoint file, but it's going to remain as a Word or PowerPoint file within your Google Drive. You can then open it as a Google Slides or a Google Doc, but personally, I think it's just easier to have it automatically convert. You may also want to turn on offline access for your files if that is something that interests you. And then go into the app section and just kind of review what apps have access to your Google Drive. Sometimes we allow apps access and then we're like, wait, what even is this? So you could always remove any apps that you are no longer using or that you don't even know what they are. And finally, tip number six, empty the trash can. Technically, this is not a necessity. The trash can automatically empties files after they have been in there for 30 days. This is a change that Google Drive made. They used to stay in there forever, but now they automatically delete after 30 days. I will say there's just something very satisfying about going in and emptying the trash can after you've gone through all the rest of the steps. But that is going to be it. If you found this video helpful, please share it out with any teacher friends who might also enjoy it. I'm going to also link some other Google Drive related videos that I have on my channel for you down in the description box. I have one all about organizing your Google Drive. I have one all about transferring your Google Drive. So if you are changing schools or districts, that may interest you. And I also have one all about Google Drive features that are best for teachers. So make sure you check those out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.